Hi, it's Daniel Murphy, and I want to take a look at another video of a barber chair here on downloaded from YouTube. This to me is a classic example of an unintentional bypass Dutchman in the face causing the barber chair. And let's take a look at how dangerous that could be. That piece lifted up about 20 feet and then just slammed down to the ground. So why did I say that this is a barber chair caused by an unintentional bypass in the face? Watch here, he's going to stop for a second and look up at the tree. So he stops and looks up. Now why did he do that? Let's replay that in slow motion. So now he's on his feet, he's into the back cut, and we got this plane at half speed. If you look not at the forward, but look at the top of the tree, you'll see the top of the tree starts to move right there, and then he stands back and he looks up at it. He's expecting the tree to start to go. Let's watch that over three more times again. And you can see that tree's moving. All right, here it is again. Tree's starting to move and he stands up. And one more time, as he finishing the cut, watch that tree start to move. Just in case you didn't catch that, look at these still photos, the back and forth movement at the top of that tree. It's very, very slight. And it's actually the slight bit of movement that is the clear indicator and uncontrovertible evidence to show that this tree was cut with an unintentional bypass Dutchman in the face. With the bypass Dutchman, what that refers to is the two cuts for, that form the face cut. One of them goes further in than the other. In this case, the lower cut, the floor cut, is bypassing. And you can see that that curve then begins to act as its own mini notch. So the tree will move ever so slightly until that curve closes. And when, it move, when that curve closes, it hesitates there, begins to move, and then stops. That is the clear indication of a bypass Dutchman. And when that tree stops, now it has a little more forward lean, and you have a little momentum of the top pulling forward, which creates a vertical split in the trunk. Gives it that much more potential to split up the trunk like that. And with species that are prone to that kind of splitting, in this case, I believe it's an alder, but it certainly white ash in the East Coast is one of the worst, you're going to end up with a, a split trunk. Here's an example right here of the bypass. You see the flat spot in front of those hinge fibers? That was an unintentional bypass of the top that a buddy of mine cut. In this diagram, you can see that the bypass could be with either cut, the angled cut or the flat cut. And oftentimes they fill up with sawdust. You'll often see experienced followers when they're done making their notches, They'll get in there and they'll brush out that sawdust to make sure the sawdust isn't hiding a bypass. And if you're working with a short bar or your cuts don't, aren't level, sometimes the bypass will only be on the one side of the notch. So the far side of the notch, oftentimes it's hidden over there. That's why you always double check your notches. And you can see what happens there when the piece stops, the, the forward pull on the top wants to pry along that dotted line there. Pry those fibers apart and it'll create that whole backside to lift up. There are a number of techniques you can use to make sure you avoid the bypass in the Dutchman. One of the techniques I use is called the plate cut. And generally when I'm done the plate cut, I could put a finger or two fingers in that apex. There's definitely going to be no bypass in that notch. So watch your notches, be extremely careful, make sure they're cleaned out, make sure you get in there and take a good look at them, make sure there's no bypass. And you will avoid the number one rookie mistake in tree falling. Thanks for watching. Daniel Murphy, leave comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are.